Hey there. We at Blue Wire just wanted to take a second to thank you for listening to this podcast. We know everything outside is pretty scary and uncertain, but we're committed to helping you get through your day by talking about the sports and teams that you love most. If you're looking for more great podcasts to distract you, check out BlueWirePods.com. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the podcast and stay safe. It's time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Here's your host, John Chapman. All right, welcome to another episode of the 49ers Rush Podcast. I am your host, as always, John Chapman, and I am excited. Uh, a handful of people on Twitter, you know, I'm finalizing my uh, draft board, my big board, if you will, and man, we, we've got a lot of people ranked uh, all the way down through, let's see here, 79 players that I've seen at least three game film clips of and you know still working through that still going to be adding to that all the way up to the draft which I'm recording this uh, it's Thursday and so you know it's the 2nd of April and we've got a lot of stuff coming your way and we're going to keep working you know but we're only three weeks away from the draft so it is getting go time for sure and what I wanted to do today is just something a little bit different I wanted to step back and give a quick snapshot of my top 31, and 31 specifically because the 49ers are picking 13 and number 31, and just wanted to go over just kind of the big board and how I have it see it set. Now, having said that, uh, there are constantly new information coming out, um, going back struggling with where I have players set up and you know different tiered rankings, which I do as well, so this isn't finalized yet, and just like most NFL teams, uh, their big board won't be finalized until, you know, a day or two before the draft. So what I wanted to do is just kind of run through these top 31 names. And again, these are just the way in which I rank them. These are my own personal things. So uh, if you disagree with them, that's fine. Uh, definitely, <laughs> I'm not going to nail the top 31 players in the NFL, but this is how I've seen them through film so far. Now, you always have to take into effect scheme fit, uh, where their landing spots are, and all those things. But one of the kind of common traits I look for when finishing up my big board, and again, I'm a big film guy. I, I dig into analytics a lot, um, especially with offensive linemen, quarterbacks, uh, wide receivers. I think that that tells us a lot. Secondary as well. But here's the issue. Whenever I could find players whose highlights match their game film, those are players that I star. Um, whenever you can't tell a big difference, you know, my draft axiom that I say uh, time and time again, uh, highlights are like reading a player that set up their dating profile themselves. Game tape is like interviewing their ex. And so whenever you can find players who you can't really tell a difference between their game film and their highlights, that is huge because consistency in the NFL is so much, uh, you know, these players are playing 60 plus snaps a game and you know yeah you might get your one or two kind of huge whatever you know trophy plays but you want somebody that is going to be consistently great and so as we dig into this and we jump in these are the total prospects, not necessarily what's best for the 49ers, but this is what, you know, you put everybody in a vacuum and who is the best player coming out of college. These are the guys that I, you know, have scouted. Now, I have 141 players that I've watched at least one game tape on. These are all of the players, um, you know, the top 31 that I've watched three on as well. So let's jump right into it and right up top. Yeah, not much of a surprise. Chase Young, edge player out of Ohio State. Uh, the amount of edge players that they have been able to put out from this school is nuts. Um, 
And, you know, I have him ranked right behind where I had Nick Bosa last year. Uh, Nick Bosa was the number one player on my board last year. Uh, rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, um, rookie all-pro team, all-pro, all those things. He nailed them all. Um, I think Chase Young is slightly behind him just because um, sometimes he disappears. Um, he, he disappears in some games, but he is still by far and away and kind of in a tier uh, to himself. Now, number two, I have the quarterback out of LSU, Joe Burrow, who – man just came on fire and put up one of the perhaps the best college football seasons ever at the quarterback position I really really do like him and I do think that he will go number one overall to the Bengals now there are some rumors popping up that the Miami Dolphins are interesting in trading up to the number one spot to try to get Joe Burrow, which will be interesting. Um, my number three spot, I'm staying at the quarterback position, and I am a big believer in this kid. This is Tua Tonga Vailoa out of Alabama. Yes, the hip is a concern, but if you jump back and if you watch all of his game tape, uh, literally the very first game that he got in, meaningful playing time, you know, he jumps in against Georgia in the national championship game, brings them from a two touchdown deficit to win the national championship. And if you jump back, you know, think about all the Trevor Lawrence talk now and how teams are like, oh, well, they might stockpile picks for Trevor Lawrence. No, Tua was the first one. It was tank for Tua. And whenever you look at all of his game tape as a whole, uh, from 2017, 2018, 2019, he has been phenomenal. And I think in a lot of drafts, he would be the number one overall player. Um, the hip is a concern. You know, you did get the video coming out of him working out, and it looks very, very good. I'm sure we're going to get some more of those as we get closer to the draft. But this is a guy that you can build your franchise around. And I do not think that he makes it out of the third pick. I think a team will trade up or one of the surprise teams like the Redskins or the Lions will take him. I do not believe um, in today's NFL a quarterback of Tua's kind of promise will fall past number three. A uh, very, very talented player and very excited to see what he's going to do at the next level. Number four, interesting because this is a player that I don't really know where to put him. And that's Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. But you talk about a player that has such a high ceiling and such a high floor. The worst case scenario with Isaiah Simmons, linebacker out of Clemson, is that he is going to be a Pro Bowl inside linebacker. That's the worst case. I think strong safety or nickel corner is probably going to be his best spot against tight ends. Uh, but he is a piece that you can move around. And if he goes to a creative defensive uh, play caller, it's going to be just stupid. Think about all the things that happened. You know, you can go back to the safety position with Troy Polamalu. You could do all of that and more with Isaiah Simmons. So hopefully he goes to a skilled uh, play caller. He's a very, very fun player that I think all 32 teams uh, have a position for. It doesn't matter how good your linebackers, how good your safeties, how good your corners are. This guy will upgrade all 32 teams day one. Uh, pick number five, and I think a lot of 49ers are going to like this. Jerry Judy, wide receiver out of Alabama. I think that there is less than a 15% chance, probably closer to 10%, that Jerry Judy is going to be there for the 49ers at 13. Um, he is as clean a wide receiver prospect as you are going to get. Um, I don't think that he has the... Here, Here's the deal. Um, he is a perfect route runner. He does have an issue with catches, you know, seven drops uh, this last year, but he still has top tier speed, 4-4 four, four guy, can still be that big play threat and all those things. But I don't think that he's one of those guys that can be the best wide receiver in the NFL, but I think that he's a guaranteed double or a triple. Uh, super safe at the wide receiver position, does not exist. The kid loves football, his work ethic is amazing, can't find anybody saying anything bad about him. Number five overall, I have Jerry Judy, and I just, again, I just, he is one of those wide receivers that everybody loves. And so I just don't see how he's going to fall to 13. I would love for him to, uh, but I don't see it. At number six, Ohio State, they get another player. They had the number one in Chase Young. Staying on the defensive side, Jeffrey Akuda, very clean cornerback prospect. Uh, left a little much. His top end speed, you know, 4-5 guy, which the cornerback position speed is the most important. 
Um, Richard Sherman probably begs to differ, but he makes up with it with physicality, length, and instincts, which are all off the charts for Sherman. Okuda, though, very, very clean prospect, great hips, all those things. Um, he is going to be going in the top 10. He could fall a little bit just because there are several different corners in this class that I have with the first and second round grade. But Okuda, very clean prospect that a lot of teams are going to love. Number seven, Derek Brown, defensive tackle out of Auburn. A lot of people keep calling him a nose tackle. But they did not pay attention to the film. Uh, I think he took seven more as many snaps at, um, in the B gap or the three technique than he did on the nose guard or in either A gap. This guy is one of the best run defenders to come out of the draft in a very long time. And, by the way, not a slouch in pass pro. Um just one of those players that is going to be a high-energy defensive prospect. Um, and if he could be put on a snap count limit, um, you know, in in college he was just out there the whole damn game, and I think that was problematic. Most teams in the NFL don't do that, especially like the 49ers, how they rotate their defensive line. If he goes to a team that can do that and he can just ball out and go all out on the place he's in there, this is a guy that could be an all-pro player at the interior defensive line day one. Love Derek Brown and what he brings and the energy and attitude that he brings. And one of my favorite things, again, you go back and talk about highlights versus game film. You put on Derek Brown's Ver Auburn versus LSU tape, and you watch him go against two NFL prospects that are going to get drafted at the offensive guard position, and he manhandles them play in and play out nonstop. Um, that's exactly what you're looking for because, again, you're seeing him versus the best, and there is no doubt. In fact, <laughs> he kind of ruined their draft stock. I think both of those guys, the offensive guards, would have had an opportunity and, you know, kind of being – first and second round guys, but he just destroyed them so bad that <laughs> he ruined their draft stock. So that's that's my number seven player. Number eight, wide receiver position, C.D. Lamb, Oklahoma. Love this guy. And, man, you know, my top tier wide receivers, they are Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb, and Henry Ruggs. And I love all three of them. And it's kind of pick your poison. What do you want? If you want the huge contested catch, yards after the catch, highlight real guy, you want C.D. Lamb. But if you are an offense that puts a priority on route running and timing, C.D. Lamb's not going to be your guy. Uh, you're going to want Jerry Judy. If you're wanting a downfield vertical threat, a speed demon that can blow the top off and make sure teams don't load, you know, only keep one safety back, then you want Henry Ruggs. And so it, it's really what is your flavor. But C.D. Lamb... Make no mistake, very easily could be the best wide receiver in this class, and you wouldn't be shocked if he's one of the top wide receivers in the NFL in just a few short years. But the problem is, again, you know, we talked about Jerry Judy and how clean he was. C.D. Lamb, because of the offense he was in at Oklahoma, is very different than anything in the NFL. Uh, maybe Arizona is probably the closest thing with Kiff King Kingsbury, but even then, what Kingsbury runs is kind of an outdated, archaic version of the air raid system. Um, what Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma have done, they it's brand new. There's nobody else that's doing what they're doing. So, and the fact that he's played with three Heisman worthy quarterbacks, you know, he was there with Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and Jalen Hurts. Is he going to have that same type of quarterback play at the next level? We'll have to see what happens there. Number nine, Tristan Wirfs, my first offensive tackle and most clean prospect out of Iowa. The first offensive tackle to start as a true freshman under Kirk Ferentz since he has been there. I think it's been 13 years, uh, but he is the first. And if you look at the Iowa pedigree at offensive tackles that have come through there, Wirfs is as good as any, and again, in a day and age where you do not want to miss on a prospect, Wirfs is the guy that is worst case scenario, you're getting Eric Fisher, who starts for your team for 10 years. Best case scenario, you're talking about a Pro Bowl, all pro left tackle or right tackle, whatever you need. Right behind him, Kai Becton. Uh, offensive tackle out of Louisville. Now he is, and it, it, I have these guys back to back, but they could not be further from the truth. Uh, they're different players. Mikai Beckett, you know, very similar to Trenton Brown and the fact that he's just a behemoth, uh, you know, all the way up to 380 pounds, just a gigantic human being, a mountain of a man. Now, he did play in his own blocking scheme at Louisville. However, 
Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers, they typically like prototypical tackles to be much smaller. They don't mind height, but they don't like um, the excess body weight. Now, Becton did go out there and run just barely over a five-second 40, and he moves very, very well. Um and if you want to get deep into <laughs> uh, the storm dweller, if you will, uh, the video that John Lynch, the GM for the 49ers, put out there just praising the medical workers, you can see in the background, he is watching Louisville offensive game tape versus Kentucky. Uh, the only combine invited athlete on the offense of Louisville or defense of Kentucky was Mekhi Becton. So we know that he, they are at least considering it, but it would be a little bit outside of the MO for what Kyle Shanahan likes in his offensive tackles. I personally think it'd be a big fit, but Mekhi Becton does have a little bit more risk just because there aren't that many people built like him, but his ceiling also, because there aren't that many people built like him, is higher than most. And so uh, do you want the guaranteed double or do you want to swing for the home run? That is going to be a concern um, there. And as we're getting in this range, these are the type of players and decisions the 49ers are going to have to make at 13. Uh, because, you know, once you get into that eight, nine, 8 through 15 range, these are the players that will fall or be available at pick 13 for the 49ers if they choose to stay fit. Um, now, number 11, Henry Ruggs, my last wide receiver out of those top-tier guys. Speed demon, but he is so much more than that. I understand people's concern and hesitancy whenever you talk about 4-2 wide receivers because if you look at the combine and you look at the players that have been near the top of the 40-yard dash, they don't have a lot of success at the next level. But Henry Ruggs is a great polished wide receiver with amazing hands that happens to be fast uh, that's just a bonus I love Henry Ruggs I have no problem if he goes uh, first overall out of all of the wide receivers um, he is going to be a great pro for a long time now is he going to be that true number one and all that stuff I'm not sure that's who he is but I guarantee you if defenses are scared to hell of Henry Ruggs he is the type of guy that will make a defensive coordinator change his game plan much more so than Jerry Judy or C.D. Lamb. This is a guy that could have two to three catches for 150 yards in one game and just change the makeup of a game completely. Now, uh, these next two players I have back and forth, and I've switched them time and time again, and I'm probably not done switching them. Number 12 overall, Christian Fulton, cornerback out of LSU. I seem to be way higher on this kid than everybody else. Um, I, the perennial number two corner uh, is, that everybody talks about is C.J. Henderson out of Florida. And I, I have him next up. These are my 12 and 13 players. But Christian Fulton, when I watch him versus Alabama, and you see him go against Jerry Judy, you see him go against um, Henry Ruggs, you see him go against Waddle, th he's not out of place. This kid, if I had to pick, look, you got one play, and you're going up against Julio Jones. I want Kristen Fulton out of any cornerback in this class. Now, who is the most polished and clean um, corner prospect? I think that's C.J. Henderson. He's smooth. He looks the part. He has the length. He has the speed. He has all those things. Now, the problem with both of these guys is neither one of them are big run defenders they don't like getting in there you have highlight clips of both Fulton and Henderson making big time hits on special teams um, blitzing the quarterback things like that but it's not consistent again back to and as we you know we get further down this list that's what's starting to happen uh, the highlights and game tape is starting to become a bigger chasm between the two but with Kristen Fulton you know his ceiling is as high as any corner in this class if it just clicks and if he goes to a right system, uh, that's why I have him number 12 overall and Christian, or sorry, CJ Henderson number 13. Both solid top tier corners that could fall just because of how they are in the run game. Pick 14, Jedrick Wills, Alabama offensive tackle. Now, here's the issue with Wills. And maybe it's not even an issue with Wills. This is a problem with helmet and uniform scouting. Alabama has had a lot of bust at the offensive line position. Now, Jedrick Wills, I think, you know, athleticism, size-wise, productivity, uh, competition level, he checks it all off. 
But it does put a little question mark in the back of your head, man. Why is Alabama able to have such a great offensive line, but those players can't continue to be as successful at the next level? Um, and if you didn't have five or six guys that went before him in very recent drafts that did not pan out, um, I think Jedrick Wills would be up with the other two tackles, Wirfs and Becton. But again, I, you know, Wirfs at nine, Becton ten. And, you know, we're talking he's down to 14 overall. And I think a real possibility for the 49ers. I know a lot of guys don't like to hear that. But uh, offensive tackle is a long-time concern. And if you're the 49ers, you're not going to be picking in the top 25 in a very long time outside of a trade like which we saw with DeForest Buckner. So, it, you know, if you want to get a top-tier corner, wide receiver, or offensive tackle, this is your time. Now, unfortunately, you just have one pick there. So you can't do all three. And you're going to have to kind of sacrifice some needs and move around and figure that out. But uh, that's kind of what they're figuring out now. Number 15, Javon Kinlaw. And I know I'm going to get flack for this. Defensive tackle out of South Carolina. Yes, I do have a very big difference between Derek Brown and Javon Kinlaw. Now, if the 49ers took Kinlaw at 13, would I be happy? Hell yeah, I would. He is a top-tier player with amazing um, ceiling. You, I mean, he is a guy that is a little bust worthy. Um, definitely his energy level and his effort level is lacking at times. He does make two to three gigantic plays, you know, where he chases down a screen 20 yards down the field. And then you're going to have five plays where he's just kind of watching and jogging down the field. But I do love Javon Kinlaw, and I think that he would be a perfect fit for the 49ers. And his pass rush moves are definitely much better uh, than Derrick Brown's. But I just think, you know, his story is amazing, and they need to make a movie about him. Uh, it, you know, you talk about just coming out of homelessness and, you know, not being able to eat while at college and things like that and going on with football. Uh, the problem is he's got a little bit of a weight issue. He did drop 40 pounds this last year and looks awesome. He looks like a tight end playing defensive tackle. But effort and consistency, those are some major concerns. Uh, pick number 16, a uh, very weak edge class, but I like this kid a lot. Kayla Von Chasen, edge out of LSU, and I think he's going to go a lot higher than this. I have him at 16, um, but because this draft is so devoid of edge depth, uh, that's going to push these players up. There's not a team in the NFL, 49ers included, who have three stud edge players. Uh, they still... Uh, want more edge guys so um, every single team wants this this is just what it is and that's pick 16 we're going to finish the second half of this just after a quick word from our sponsors and here's the deal with no nba nhl or mlb you might think there's nothing to bet on out there well you'd be wrong our executive partners has hundreds of sports events and games to wager on betonline.ag they are awesome Okay, let them bring Vegas to you. You want to bet? Online poker, uh, casino, blackjack, they got you all 24 hours a day, and everything's open, including their $750,000 poker series. Head over there, and again, you, you want to bet on something that's not sports or casino, they got you there too. Props and entertainment betting, you can bet on Survivor, American Idol, stock prices, even the weather. They've got everything. Visit their website today and join and receive a 100 percent welcome bonus with your first deposit just be sure to use the promo code blue wire that's blue like the color wire one word betonline.ag your online wagering experts really want to say thank you to them and their support of this podcast now let's move on to 17 through 31 17 i have the last of the top tier of offensive tackles and that is andrew thomas out of georgia now he he's interesting because most rankers, including myself, I have them as the fourth overall tackle. But there are going to be teams that are really into run blocking that are going to love Andrew Thomas much more than some of the other guys. I would not be shocked at all if he went number two or number three overall, uh, tackle-wise, not o overall picks. But Andrew Thomas is a guy that if he does fall, uh, you're, you're going to see a trade up for because he has the pedigree. Love this kid. Very, very clean. A big reason why Jeff Fromm is being, Jake Fromm is being drafted is because of the left tackle in the offensive line at Georgia. Pick number 18, and he has fallen a little bit. This is Grant Delpit, safety out of LSU. And I will also make known, this is my only safety that I have a first-round grade on. I have 21 
first round grades so far. Um, I have a couple guys that are on the fringe, but currently, if I was to finish my board today, I would only have 21. Now, this is pretty normal for teams. Sometimes teams only have 18 to 25, uh, just because they are 32 first round picks doesn't mean you have 32 first round grades. So for example, I have 21 first round grades and I have 36 second round grades. So it doesn't necessarily match with where the picks are. It's where the player grades out and how you value that player. I love Grant Delpit. Uh, the ball skills at the safety position, the instincts, the intelligence at the safety position are key. He has all of those. Did he miss some tackles? Yes, he did. Is that a concern? Yes, it is. But whenever you look back at his 2018 tape or his 2017 tape, those were not major concerns. So you, you can't teach ball skills, and you can't teach instincts or breaking on the ball. He has all those things in spades and has done it at the highest level. Um, I love Grant Delpit. I think whoever gets him is going to be very, very well pleased. Um, very excited for what this kid can do. Uh, he's my number 18 player. Number 19, and probably one of the biggest shockers or surprises in the first round, this is my first offensive guard out of Ohio State, Jonah Jackson. This kid is special. Now, main concerns for him, he has never played center. He has never snapped. I don't know if teams will kind of see him as a center a lot of people that draft in the interior spot they want the position flexibility but i don't think that he has it but his ceiling and his floor are nuts this is a big reason why i have a first round grade on him you don't have to worry if this kid's a bust and you're waiting until pick 19. You're looking at teams like the Baltimore Ravens, the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Seattle Seahawks at the end of the first round. He is going to go in the first round. I can guarantee it. Um, this kid is clean. Um, and he's going to step in for a team that wants to run the ball. And they are going to love him. He'll be a 10-year starter and do just fine at the offensive guard position. Staying inside. This is my first center slash guards, and that's Cesar Ruiz out of Michigan. Like this kid a lot. His film is fun. He gives you that position flexibility that Jonah Jackson doesn't, but I think if you put them in a vacuum, Jonah Jackson is a better player. Um, now, the center position, a lot of teams, 49ers included, value that position much more than the interior spots. So with the 49ers spend a top-tier pick like 31 on an offensive guard only, I don't know. I really don't know, but Cesar Ruiz and Jonah, Jonah Jackson love those two guys. Whoever gets them, their team is going to be better in the trenches. And my last first-round grade player is Justin Jefferson out of LSU. Um, he's just too clean. I, his highlights aren't the best, but his consistency is the best. <laughs> um, he is always where he needs to be. There's no negatives to his game. I wasn't sure what his speed would be and what his hip flexibility would be, but he showed out at the combine and just erased any type of question that you have on him. Again, he's one of those players. I call him Michael Thomas Light. Um, you know, he's going to be as good as his quarterbacks are around him, but he's going to be the quarterback's best friend wherever he goes. Clean, uh, clear routes, great hands, understanding spacing, can beat press. Now, he did play predominantly out of the slot, but whenever he was pressed, he did relatively well. There wasn't a lot of examples of those, but this is a clean prospect, and he deserves a first-round grade. Now we're into my second-round grade. We're at pick 22 here. And kind of one of the big difference between each position in the first and second round is there's question marks. There are question marks with each one of these players. And as we work ourselves further down this big board, you have to kind of scratch your head and say, what it might not be so much what this player can't do, but what can this player do that fits with each team? There's just two different ways to look at it. So, for example, pick number 22, offensive tackle Joshua Jones out of Houston. Now we're into question mark area. Now his... Level of competition, definitely subpar. But whenever he played against Oklahoma, which was the best team that he played against, he shined. Struggled the first day in the Senior Bowl, then got way better. Um, so th there's a huge ceiling play. And again, in today's NFL at the offensive tackle position, you have Mekhi Becton, who doesn't really fit because he's so damn big. And then you have this super hyper athletic Joshua Jones where he could almost play tight end. And teams like the 49ers covet this guy. 
this type of guy. Um, so that's Joshua Jones, offensive tackle, Houston there. Right behind him, Lucas Nang, Niang at TCU. This guy just all he does is produce. Again, a hybrid type offense that's moving around, kind of a run and shoot type offense. But all he did was not give up a sack in three years as a starter. And so he's just one of those guys that just gets it done. Uh, you might not like his hip bend or his flexibility or any of that stuff or his length as much as some other guys. But at the end of the day, he's just a guy that got it done for three straight years and a plug and play type tackle that you don't have to worry about in pass pro. Could he be better in run blocking? Yes, he could. But he's not going to get your quarterback hit, and that's why I like him here. Pick number 23. Now I've got back-to-back -back edge guys, and I'm struggling with who I like more out of this group. And I've, I've changed my mind back and forth on them. Number 24, Yitur Gross Matos out of Penn State. Edge guy, and man, if you know anything about Penn State the past five years, they put out some athletes. So he's kind of the first one off the bus, just a gigantic freak, uh, rocked out of his mind, whatever else. Sometimes the production isn't there, and sometimes he disappears from games. But, again, weak edge class. That's going to push this player up. Right behind him, 25, Zach Bond, edge player out of Wisconsin. Tough as nails, as most Wisconsin players are. you got to live through that cold and those winters. <laughs> it's going to cause problems. But Zach Bond is a very clean prospect that a lot of teams are going to like and offer some position flexibility. Um, you know, 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, he's going to fit both. Um, he he could kind of do it all. Really, really like this player. But again, he kind of lacks that elite bend off the edge. But, he, you know, a lot of effort plays and just refuses to give up. Like this kid a lot. He's going to be going close to the first round late second. Number 26, Denzel Mims, wide receiver Baylor. I know a lot of people love this guy, and a lot of people want him going to the 49ers at pick 31. I'm not sure he's going to be there. Now, the question marks, and again, as we're into the second round, as all these players have, the Baylor system's problematic. You know, the 49ers drafted Jalen Hurd in the third round, but they don't run the full route tree. Um, you know, he has been very consistent and, you know, two years of production there at Baylor, but he is a height, weight, speed freak. And let me tell you this, the highlight plays, you cannot watch an entire game film without seeing one or two highlights from this kid. He is awesome. There are some question marks. Can he get off press? Things like that. His body says he can, the metric says he can, but that offense is kind of weird. It doesn't translate directly to the NFL, but he is a huge ceiling play. Um, again, one of those players, he's not like Justin Jefferson in the fact that he's a safe bet, but he is one of those players that could be the best in the NFL. And so some teams draft for ceiling, some teams draft for floor. If you're a ceiling and you want to swing for the fences, Denzel Mims is going to be your guy. Now right behind him, I love this kid, love his tape. Jalen Rager, TCU wide receiver, <sighs> He's special, man. Um, you know, I the first time I watched him, before I finished all the other wide receivers, I you know I put out a tweet and I just showed a little clip of him playing. And I said, "This is going to be Kyle Shanahan's top wide receiver. He fits every single thing he that Kyle Shanahan wants to do on film." Now the problem was he goes to the combine and laid an egg. Uh, he ran a four four seven forty, but his six cone was bad which was really, really problematic for me because Kyle Shanahan loves short area quickness, which shows for Rager on film. Um, and I, I don't know what happened there. I, I really wish he could have had a pro day and could have cleaned that up. But, we, you know, with the virus and all that kind of stuff, it kind of fell by the wayside. But, you know, Jalen Rager is a guy that I really thought would be a perfect fit for the 49ers. But, um, yeah, that, that three cone might be so bad that Kyle Shanahan just says, nope, uh, we're not going to do it. So he's going to fall in the draft to the second round, I believe. But, man, you watch his film, first round draft pick. Metrics makes you question everything. Uh, but uh, Jalen Rager, wide receiver TCU, very excited to see what his career is going to look like because he's you're he's the most fun player to watch. Like I, I you watch three film on all three game films on all these guys. I watch five on him. <laughs> I, I can't stop watching him. He's that electric. Um, so whoever gets him, I hope he goes to a team with a decent quarterback and offensive system because there's something special about this kid. I don't know what it is. It's hard to, to measure. But uh, Jalen Rager, uh, keep an eye out for that kid.
All right, wrapping it up here down to 28, Trayvon Diggs, corner out of Alabama. Love his ball skills, converted wide receiver, Stephen Diggs' little brother. Uh, very high ceiling, very raw corner prospect. But uh, make no mistake, uh, this kid is going to be a top-tier NFL corner if you are patient with him. Uh, now, he was abused by Jamar Chase in LSU, but uh, who isn't? Uh, we'll have to see. He did great against other premier wide receivers in the SEC. Trayvon Diggs, ball skills is huge. So if you want interceptions at your cornerback position, Trayvon Diggs, cornerback Alabama number 28. Staying at the corner position, A.J. Terrell, number 29, uh, cornerback out of Clemson. If you took away... Again, staying with, uh, you know, we just talked about Trayvon Diggs losing. Now we're talking about A.J. Terrell uh, getting beat by Jamar Chase as well uh, in LSU. They did it to everybody. And so <laughs> he's kind of the uh, Derek Brown of wide receivers. He, he's not eligible in the draft this year. He probably will be next year. But A.J. Terrell has started three-plus years for Clemson. And think about the teams they put out there. Perfect height, weight, speed, and physicality that you want in a cover three system. He has all of those metrics. This kid, I really do believe, will be going in the first round. Now, I have him number 29. There are some question marks with him. Again, you know, you hate seeing the last time you saw him uh, get abused and picked on, but how much do you... He, how much do you put that on him? You know, how do you weigh that out? He's not going to be going against Julio Jones every single play, but uh, AJ Terrell is a starting NFL corner. Um, and the, I guess the question with him is his ceiling isn't as high as guys like Trayvon Diggs. I think he's much safer to play day one. Uh, but I, again, guys like Diggs and his athleticism, I think, is it makes him he he has a bigger payoff if that makes sense. All right, last two, and they are from the interior offensive line at 30 and 31. I have Matt Hennessy, offensive guard at Temple, and Robert Hunt, offensive guard slash tackle, center. He can play it all from Louisiana Lafayette. And he, here's the thing. You know, you talk about Matt Hennessy, center slash guard, three-year starter, gave up zero sacks this year. He's allowed one sack in three years, and his grades across the spectrum are just off the charts. Uh, for Pro Football Focus, you watch game film, and every single time you watch him, you're just like, holy freaking cow, this kid is tough as hell. You know, he had a single-digit practice squad jersey at Temple, which is huge. They give that to the toughest players on the team. This is a guy that is a leader that will step in and start day one, and a lot of teams are going to like him. A lot of teams are going to really like just the toughness that he brings. Robert Hunt, he was a guy that was a four-year starter at Tackle. But, you know, he's 6'5". Um, a lot of teams are going to bump him inside to guard. Perhaps he could eventually work up to tackle. Or you can plug him in at right tackle day one. I doubt teams see Robert Hunt as a left tackle. He is the definition of violence. Now, you talk about he doesn't have the competition level playing at Louisiana Lafayette and all those things. That's fine. But you see what he did consistently against everybody it's he's just so violent and clean um you know <laughs> my player comp for him was Ladania or Lakin Tomlinson but meaner he just he's very clean very savvy but he's just mean as hell so those are my top 31 players um honorable mention I won't go into these prospects but you know just jumping down right past 31 Xavier McKinney Anton Winfield DeAndre Smith Jordan Love Justin Herbert Jordan Elliott Patrick Queen Kenneth Murray uh, that's down through 39 so hopefully this just kind of gives you a picture of where these players fit on the big board and what that looks like not saying necessarily that the number 13 player would go to the 49ers to 31 but this is how i have them ranked there's still going to be some movement um uh, and things like that but i just thought it'd be a good practice to kind of step back and just order one through 31 and hopefully you guys enjoyed this um but that's going to do it for us today and sorry we didn't have uh any video uh <laughs> it's kind of rough over here at the chapman household currently with lockdown situation but i wanted to get a podcast out to you guys and hope all is well and until next time stay strong faithful <laughs>